Moscow took an amazed world by surprise and ushered in yet another era in the history of flight. The announcement said the world's first spaceship, Vostok, with a man on board, was launched into orbit from the Soviet Union on 12 April 1961. The pilot navigator of the satellite spaceship Vostok is a citizen of the USSR, flight major Yuri Gagarin. After one orbit of the Earth, a flight that lasted 108 minutes, Gagarin returned to Earth. It was proved humans could survive in space. As people everywhere acclaimed the Soviet feat, many wondered how the United States once again had been left behind. While we did lag far behind the Soviets, we were close to launching a man into space, although not into orbit. On May 5th, 1961, Freedom 7 carried America's first astronaut, Commander Alan B. Shepard, 302 miles downrange from its Cape Canaveral launching site, reaching a peak altitude of 115 miles. This was the first planned mission of Project Mercury. 20 days later, President John F. Kennedy affirmed his faith in American technology with his bold announcement. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. In the dizzying decade that followed, Americans would get to know the names Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and astronauts would become the instant heroes of the 1960s. On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. During the three-orbit, four-hour and 55-minute flight, Glenn saw three sunsets. They were very brilliant colored hues, he reported, and the colors stretched out from the sun to horizon. He saw the world as no other American had seen it. When John Glenn was plucked safely from the seas, the world knew that we were truly on the way to the moon. The American Mercury and the Soviet Vostok programs both ended in 1963. Soviet cosmonauts had logged 382 hours, compared with the American astronauts, 53 hours. It would take two more years and a successful series of two-man Gemini flights to turn the tables. But before that could happen, the Soviets would beat us to another space milestone. In March of 1965, Alexei Leonov became the first to leave his craft and walk in space further proof that humans could work effectively in space. But the moon was still the United States goal, and it was time to learn whether astronauts could function in space for the amount of time needed for the lunar voyages. Gemini 4 would test the endurance of astronauts Jim McDivitt and Ed White. They would be aloft for 97 hours and 56 minutes during which Ed White became the first American to walk in space. Okay, I'm out. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. I'm under my own control. Okay, I'm coming over. So that's beautiful. I feel like a million dollars. The excellent physical condition of White and McDivitt as they arrived on deck of the recovery carrier USS Wasp proved the success of their mission. For the next four years, the flights continued, and more and more questions were answered as the Apollo program replaced Gemini. The United States drew closer and closer to its goal. By July 16, 1969, all the pieces had fallen into place. We were ready. Three names were on everyone's lips. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. Aboard the Apollo 11 command module, Columbia, they were on their way to the moon. On July 20th, 1969, Armstrong and Aldrin left the Columbia in the lunar module, Eagle.
and two and a half hours later, a few simple words. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Signified the crossing of yet another barrier. For a brief moment, all mankind was united in the shared joy and exultation of success. In 1962, astronaut John Glenn had addressed a joint session of Congress. I feel we are on the brink of an area of expansion of knowledge about ourselves and our surroundings that is beyond description or even comprehension at this time. Our efforts today and what we've done so far are but small building blocks in a very huge pyramid to come. Knowledge begets knowledge. The more I see, the more impressed I am, not with how much we know, but with how tremendous the areas are that are as yet unexplored. Today, it is possible for visitors to the National Air and Space Museum to touch a small piece of the moon. And what of the future? What parts of our solar system will we probe? In 1962, Mariner 2 flew by Venus, telemetering valuable scientific information back to Earth. We kept in contact with this first successful interplanetary probe until it was about 55 million miles from Earth. It is now in orbit around the Sun. Pioneer 10 flew within 82,000 miles of Jupiter on December 3, 1973, and even now continues on past the orbits of the outer planets and eventually out of the solar system itself. As our messenger to the stars, Pioneer 10 even carries a plaque designed to tell about the mission, its point of origin, and the people who built it, if any intelligent space travelers from another world should find it. Viking 1 and 2 were launched in 1970.